while you are standing. Grab your Bibles, your phones, your iPads. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. We're starting at the fourth verse. We're going to read it and then talk and then go home. Listen, O Israel. I'm reading out of the TPT translation, the Passion Translation. So it may be a little different. But it says, listen, O Israel. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Now, I want you to grab a hold of the sixth verse. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commandments that I'm giving you today. Look at your neighbor. I want you to ask your neighbor, say, I have a question for you. Do you know what your why is in your what? Amen. You may have your seat. Yeah, I know that seems a little unorthodox. Somebody say amen. Again, to this awesome, awesome leader, this great pastor, this man of God, Pastor Marvin Murphy. Let's give him a round of applause again. Amen. Amen. My friend and my brother and to all of you God's people, to all the elders and everybody uh, in the house. Uh, I want to uh, say this because I never take it for granted for those who take out of their time to travel with us. And uh, I think sometimes we take people for granted. And can y'all help me please give a round of applause to New Creation for it. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. And I am just so honored to pastor such a great flock of people. Uh, and they are just, I just love them like that. Amen. And uh, to good, good Samaritan, thank you for inviting us and having us back again. Now, you know, the third time, it becomes just a regular time, right? So we're going to see if we can come back again. Amen. We thank God for you. And to our, our campus pastor, Pastor Lee Michael, and, and to all of you, and to my lovely wife, amen, who, uh, amen, love that girl, love her. Says, amen, yeah, she over there, yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, <laughs> we'll talk about that on the way home, I'm with you, all right, all right. Let's, let's, let's take a look at just a little perusal upon this particular passage of Scripture. The word that I would like to extrapolate from the pages of the Scripture in Deuteronomy is the word commit. The word commit uh, in understanding uh, your why in your what. Understanding your why uh, in your what. A lot of folk operate uh, in just accordance to what they do and never discover the definition of the why of what they do. So therefore, in the process of what they do, they lose their passion. They lose their tenacity. They lose uh, their focus uh, because they're so much concentrated on the why, the what of the why versus the why of what they're doing. One of the things that I found out that would sustain, substantiate you uh, in your ability uh, to understand is to understand the very role, the very role that Christ played, the very uh, uh, awesomeness that uh, he put in order for us to see the will of his, of his father, watch this, come to full fruition uh, upon the earth. And see, what the church needs, this is just me observing in the years I've been in the church, the church needs more committed and accountable and sacrificial people 
to carry out the mission, not only of denomination, but of kingdom. Come on, somebody. So, so we must understand that believers are who are willing to make the work of the ministry uh, a major component of their lives and not just a Sunday morning affair. Wow. So when we look at this, we often measure an individual's accountability based upon their development, their growth, watch this, and sustaining God's plan throughout the body of Christ, throughout the body of Christ. They will be encountered with words such as work. Work and that's that's a lot of lot of lot of lot of the mishaps in the church because you don't find a lot of working believers unless they are willing to be seen working. But my question to those type of folk: What are you doing when you're not seen? Work simply is the physical or mental effort or effect of activity that's directed. Watch this toward the production of the accomplishment accomplishments of something. When you toil and, and you put strenuous uh, uh, labor, fatiguing labor, only realizing what you are doing is taking you through the process of why you are doing it. So, so I want to look at Matthew, the ninth chapter real quick, because this here tells a real true story of understanding this is what I do, but this is why I do. And what better example to use than that of Christ? Matthew, the ninth chapter, a uh, 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 lady, uh, uh, look at the ninth verse, uh, the ninth chapter, the 35th verse. And if you could get it first for me in the message Bible, if you get it first for me in the message Bible, where's she at? Oh, right <laughs> in the message Bible. And I, 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 want, I, want, I want to get real clarity so that I can uh, begin to just make a brief foundation. Watch this upon understanding the what, the why in our what, the why in our what. So Matthew, the, the ninth chapter, the 35th verse, message Bible says what? What does it say, lady? Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns watch, and villages. Watch this. This is what Jesus was doing. And I, I need you to hear this. And I need, I need full clarity that he is now currently operating in his what? Uh, what, you, what you do is you come to church. What you do is you offer praise. What you do is, 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 is you give time and you volunteer. But do you understand truly why you do it? And I, I, I know right now it don't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm telling you, if you just allow me just a few moments, just to take just a friendly perusal uh, in these scriptures, you'll understand because the next verse says what? He what? He taught in their meeting places. Come on. Reported kingdom news. Come on. And healed their diseased bodies. Watch, watch this. Now we are making a cliff shift and, and healed their diseased body. Why did he preach this kingdom news? Why did he meet in these places? It wasn't for a social gathering by any means. It was that because he was there to heal their diseased bodies. Come on. Healed their bruised and hurt lives. This is why I'm doing it, he says. This is why I'm doing it, to heal their bruised and hurt hearts. And when what? When he looked out over the crowd. When he looked over the crowd. Watch this, y'all. This, so, this is such an oxymoron. Because he looks over the crowd. And because he understands the definition of why, he is now able to discern, come on, why he, what, why he is doing what he is doing. Oh, you, you hear what I'm saying? He now understands this. Come on, right? He now understands this. So, 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 so what? Come, come on, read, because I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Come on. Come his on. heart broke. Watch this. When he looked over, his heart was broken. His heart was broken. There's so many folk will see you in a place, but because they see you praising, because they see you smiling, because they see you speaking in tongues, because they see you shouting, they figure everything is all right because they're measuring what they see externally versus what's going on internally. When you're operating in your why, your why will cause you to see beyond the surface. Am I talking to the right church? It will cause you to see beyond what people, the facade or what people put on them. You can look at them and know that they have not yet been healed from their disease, healed from their sickness, healed. And so Christ sees this. And because he understands the definition of his why, he becomes disheartened. He looks upon them. And what does he do? Come on, read it for me. So confused and aimless they Watch, were. He said they are so confused and aimless. Like sheep with no shepherd. Watch this with, with no shepherd. Come on, talk. What a huge harvest. Watch, watch, this is what he said. What a huge 
harvest to work. What, what a huge harvest to glean. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Come on, you hear what I'm saying? What, 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 what does he say? What does he say? Come on, come on. And when he says this. Harvest, watch this. He says this to who? His, his disciples. disciples. Those that he had discipled. Folk won't have a problem seeing what Pastor Murphy sees. Because they'll know the heart of the shepherd. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on. It won't become just a formality to come in the door. Come on and sing and shout your praises and go home. Come on and not worry about anybody else. Am I talking? But they would, de they would discern within the spirit. And though, though he understood and he was sharing this, he looked at them. He looked, go to the King James Version. He looks at them and he says, listen, look at the harvest. But where are the workers? Where are the people to glean what's out in the pews? Come on, come, come on. I, 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 got, I got to go to the King James because it gives us an answer. Because he goes, there are few workers. And he said, what we must do, what we must do is go on our knees and pray. And I mentioned, I heard a pastor mention about the strenuous prayer. And I'm going to tell you, that's one of the things that the church is lacking now is the discipline to pray. Y'all ain't helping me. The discipline to fast. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on, you know, everybody wants to boom the boom to bop the bop but they don't want to do anything that you got to do in order to feel the true presence of God. So they would rather be an imitation, or come on, a fact of looking or doing or following of the road of someone else than getting something down on the inside where you don't need nobody to tell you to pray God. You don't need nobody to tell you to get up or sit down. You don't need nobody to tell you to lift up your hand and pray because before you come you come and enter into his courts with a thanksgiving and you give him a praise once you get into his come on am i talking to the right folk god is looking for some workers Amen. Amen. am i talking to the right church so what does it say? Come on, read it for me. I, you got to hear this because, see, we, we, we must understand that leaders must be willing to put their hands to work and demonstrate, watch this, more than an average performance. See, and it's only through true, strong commitment and unwavering accountability and a consistent sacrifice that this harvest will be gleaned. Yeah, yeah. See, I got, I got, I got three, three factors here that I've got to place out tonight. I know I'm not going to preach on all of them, but I, I got to, I got to at least give it to your ear so that it will give you something to think about. Because Matthew says, "What, well, lady? Read it, read it real quick." Matthew, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. I need you to pray. I need, come on, somebody say, "I need you to pray." You need to get that in your spirit. I need you to pray. I, I don't need you to gossip. Come on. I don't need you to complain. I don't need you to backbite. Come on, talk to me. I don't need you to think you're holier than thou. I just simply need you to pray. And when we pray, we're coming on what, a lady? What, what, what did it say? That he will send forth laborers into his army. I need him to send forth. This is Jesus talking. I need him, them to, him to send for some laborers to glean this harvest. Well, let me go down this boulevard since all y'all looking at me and I've got the mic. You ought to be glad that somebody took the time out to pray for you. Hey, come on. You need to look down your row and get honest with yourself and tell somebody, I'm a sum total of what somebody prayed for me because if prayer hadn't have been laid on me, ain't no telling where I would be right now. Ain't no telling what I would be doing right now. But somebody took the time and they prayed for me and because they prayed for me, I'm going to give God glory right now. Think about all the old saints, how they would get around the altar and lay on the altar. We don't do that no more. This new church, man, they want everything fast, quick, and in a hurry. But I'm telling you, the Bible even tells us that some things only come by fasting and by 
praying. There's some things you ain't going to be able to work your way out, talk your way out of. Come on, come on, talk to me. There are just some things you're going to have to give to the Lord and allow God to fix it. And you keep on working the work that he gave you to work. As the young folks say, stay in your own lane. Don't try to be someone else's God and do what God called you to do. Look at your name and tell I ain't got time to be in your business. Trying to keep myself together. Trying to work this thing out for myself. Here come outside. Trying to figure it out for myself. I got, I got people talking and chattering. And, and, and come on, am I talking? And you coming inside the service and you got to pump and prime a folk uh, just to get in the spirit. The devil is a liar. I'm getting to the point where I'm just discarding people and I'm going to praise them on my own. Uh, and if you get upset, you just get upset. But I know where God has brought me from. Is there anybody in here that know where God brought you from that you are not ashamed of the gospel that you will lift up your hands in the sanctuary without wrath and say Lord I thank you the Messiah so the first thing believers have to become is committed and this is my definition you won't find this in Webster it's a deliberate and calculated choice. Yeah, you know, to steadfastly set your course with an unwavering obligation to go above and beyond your original expectation, accomplish a predetermined objective. In other words, I have my eye. It is set on the prize. And I'm not going to let anything. I'm not going to let any person. Come on, cause me to operate on the way for it. Come on, come on. Come. I, 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 can't nobody tell it like I can tell it uh, about why, why do you commit Johnson? I commit because he committed to me. Huh, he, come on, how many of you can look at your neighbor and say he committed to me? He, he, yeah, he, he thought of me when I didn't even think of myself. He, he, well, come on, somebody. He looked on me when I couldn't even look on myself. Come on, he committed to me, and the least I can do is commit back to him of what he's already done for me. Look at your neighbor and say, I gotta line up with my commitment. I got I to gotta search this thing out. I got to make sure that this is what God has called me to do. Uh, because I don't want to be in anything that God uh, does not require me to be in. So commitment is a minimum requirement for the believer. That our commitment not only be to people, but, to, but for the people to the glory of God. In other words, I'm not doing it to be seen. I mean, matter of fact, 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the second verse in the Amplified Translation says, Moreover, it is essential or required of a steward that a man be found faithful. Yeah, when you summarize it and bring these two words together, you will find that you cannot be faithful without being committed. You cannot be committed without being faithful. So it's required of him, of us, that he finds us providing ourselves worthy of his trust. Another word that the thing of the belief of God is scared of, uh, praise God, is of the, uh, accountability. Don't nobody want to be accountable to nobody. Y'all ain't talking to me. They don't want to be accounted to the pastor. They don't want to be accounted to the team leader. They don't want to be accounted to, to nobody they feel I'm grown I do what I want to do you can't tell me what to do but it is a part of being a believer that we are counted to one another y'all better talk to me y'all better talk to me I'm so sick and tired of folk can, can, giving me all kinds of excuses about why they can't make serve two times out of the week when they could go everywhere else y'all ain't talking to me and then when they have the audacity that when they miss time from the their job. They'll call the boss man because they're in fear of losing money. But what do you have fear of when you're not accountable to the house of God? What does it profit a man? Y'all ain't helping me to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Huh? Where there is no accountability, there is no dependability. 
where there's no dependability, there is no trust. See, people will not allow, uh, not follow leaders they do not trust. So they will, oh, I'm getting ready to mess up. I'm getting ready to mess up. I'm getting ready to mess up. Because people will put an expectation on you that they don't even put on their own self. Come on, somebody ought to say, he preaching. He preaching. They will put more for you to do than they will for their own self. And when it's time for them to do what they talk, they cannot preach. Come on, they cannot do what they preach. They're just a bunch of sounding witches. Y'all ain't talking. Come on, come on, talk to me. Come on, talk to me. And what God will do for us, those of us that are workers, that are accountable, that are committed, that are dependable, that are trustworthy, what God will do in return for us, he will give us a discernment and we'll learn to stay away from them because if you're not careful they'll try to influence you it don't take all that why you do this why you give him this why the devil is a lie I need about five people to stand up and say say a word sir say it. yeah yeah where well, there there's no dependability. There is no trust. People will not follow the people they do not trust. Somebody say amen. amen. Then believers and leaders must be accountable to God, to the delegated spiritual authority, and to each other in order to move ministry forward. Let me, can, can I just talk, Pastor, just five minutes, man. Five, five of your Sunday morning minutes. That's all I need. Because, see, we expect the church to move forward, but we got stinking of place. And, 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 and I'm going to come down here and say this. Because cause, 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 cause this, this is where God delivered us from. And he's still delivering us. We ain't, we ain't totally free yet. But thank God I could see some change. And, and, and one of the things I didn't realize, consistency is to breed to our success. So the more consistent you are in a thing, the more successful towards that thing you will become. Am I talking to the right church? Come on, come on. And you ain't got to do a whole lot of hip, hip, hip popping, skipping, jumping, and, and speaking in tongues to do that. All you got to simply do is just show up when you're supposed to. Am I talking to the right church? Am I talking to the right church? People will try to talk you out of your blessing. Come on, come on. I'm watching a young lady in our church right now, and I talk about it all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm watching her. She is spiritually growing. Spiritually. Spiritually. And if I would not have been consistent with my presence around her, she would not have grown to the level that she has grown to. Come on. When that girl get up and pray... She don't have to lift her voice. Y'all ain't talking to me. Why? Because she's been around the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on. She's been around the right kind of influence. She's not letting people talk in her spirit and put all kinds of things in her spirit. But when she, when she watch this, not only is she, her husband told me, he said, Bishop, he said, not only does she pray at, at, at church, you should hear her at home. See, some of our religion is just for the showcase when we get around people. But how committed are you when you're not around people? When you're at home by yourself? When you're on your child? When you're in your car? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? So we, we, we watch this, y'all. We've got to get off of the diet of wanting someone to, to stimulate us spiritually and begin to stimulate ourselves spiritually. Huh? Come on, get your own praise and worship. Put you on a tape. Come on, somebody. Come on, get in your house. Y'all ain't talking to me. So when you come out of your house, you will come with power. It won't be this artificial stuff that you'll move just when somebody sing the right song. I stood up 
two years ago. I'm getting ready to prophesy, Pastor. I stood up two years ago, and I said to our congregation, I said, the Lord said, it's time for us to move. I said, we're going. They said, yeah, Pastor, yeah. I said, no, the Lord said, they didn't know it was going to require a lot of work. I went by the church that I said was going to be ours. And with Pastor Lee, you here? Yes, and went by the church, and I beat John Brown to somebody that bought it. But I knew, I knew, I heard God. And I know someone was looking at me talking about that lying prophet. I kept staying, I kept standing up. I said, the Lord said, it's time for us to go. I say it almost every Sunday with him. The Lord said, time for us to go. We're not doing it, Brent. It's time to go. And I didn't look at us. Two years later, two years later, somebody say two years later. Me and Pastor Lee riding down, and I see a sign in that same church. I said, I said, turn this car around. Yeah. Me and him with, and there was a for sale sign in the same church that I said we were going to have. Someone else got into it, but for some reason they couldn't stay in it. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm trying to tell you, when you stay committed to the things of God, when you stay committed to the things of God. Come on, somebody say four months later. Look, look at another name. Say four months, four months ago. Say four months ago. We moved into that same building. I'm going to testify. Come on, Bishop. And before we moved in there, Pastor, are you ready? Already, without us putting a dime on the table, yearly was getting a surplus of almost $41,000. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. Watch this. When God gives you something, he said that the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And it'll add no sorrow. When God gives you something, you don't have to struggle to keep it. Can I prophesy real quick? Lift your hands, man of God. God told me to tell you, you've just turned the corner and the new building is in your glimpses. He said, you're going to get it. I wish I had some praisers now. I wish I had some real praisers. said every Sunday you get up you just declare we moving we moving come on come on good Samaritan shot we moving turn around and grab one of your neighbors and say we moving I know, I know it's a little tight in here, but I, I want you just to step out of your seat and go just touch somebody because where two or three agree as in touching, he said it will come to pass. So I need you to step out of your seat and just go touch somebody and say, we're getting ready to move, y'all. We're getting ready to move. We're moving. We're getting out of here. We've been here too long. We've outgrew this. We're getting out of here. This don't even represent who God say that we are. We're getting out. Come on, tell them we get out of here. And he told me to tell you to mark the date. 
He said for you to write down the day's date because it's coming to pass. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got to be accountable. I've got to be committed for the great work of God. I can't sit back and wonder how because I'm in my way. And in my way, I operate my what? To God be the glory. Somebody say to God be the glory. Hey, God. I feel like preaching now. So, so when people begin to sense victory, they'll make their sacrifice greater. I'm here to tell Good Samaritan, your victory has come. You don't have to wait till it is fully manifested. But when you go into your new Jerusalem, Go in with a praise. Go in with a thanksgiving. Go in with a know that the Lord will do it somehow. I dare you to praise him like you lost your mind. Praise him. Y'all, y'all got to sit down. <laughs> y'all got to sit down. <laughs> See, what people don't understand is the more you praise them, the closer to the victory you come. And something happens when you begin to sense victory. Come on, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I won't be, I won't be defeated. Come on, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody. You've been going through hell, but you need to tell the devil I won't be defeated. Come on, you need to look at a neighbor and say he should have got me when he had a chance. But tell him it's too late now. It's too late now. It's too late. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Mark. Your pastor messed around and got anointed. Yeah. See, you want them to keep counting you off. I shared this with the church on Sunday. You want them to keep counting you out. You want folk to look at you and say, you know, you need to go back where you came from. But see, when you're committed, you don't let that kind of talk talk and mess with you. You just look at them and say, I'm doing this for the Lord, and whatever he work out. He going to work out. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, I ain't studying them folk that are talking about me. Come on, look at another neighbor. Say, I ain't studying them folk that are talking about me. I got a heaven to reach and a God to please. Come on, somebody. And if God can't do it, it won't be done. Am I talking to the right church? Come on, lift up your hand. I hear the Lord say, receive your blessing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Come on. Don't wait on me. Committed folk. Praise them if they're the only person there. That's it. Listen. I want to. I got to give you these three stages I got to give you three stages then I'm going to prophesy and then I'm going home three stages three stages three stages of level of commitment first stage is the multitude level that's where people are committed to crowds they want to go where it's happening they want to be where all the people are 
As soon as the crowd moves to the next place, that's where they move. Come on, lift your hand and say, I'm not a crowd pleaser. Yeah, yeah, I'm not moved by the crowd. God can't use you if you depend on the crowd. Come on, look at your name and say, God can't use you if you're depending on the crowd. You only show up when it's a host of people. <laughs> huh, that, ain't done, that, ain't, that, that ain't the type of committed folk I want. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, and I, I, I'm not going to elaborate. It's, it's the provisional level. Uh, they, they just serve temporarily. They serve it because it's something in it for them. And they, they, they glean more towards what's in it for them than what's in it for us. So they're not working on the corporate level to where we'll all be blessed. They're just in it. They'll, they'll follow the pastor as long as the pastor is giving them what they want. And then the moment that the pastor disagrees with them, they're going to go to the next church. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm talking about people with provisional level of commitment. See, you, you don't want you don't, you, you don't, you don't want to be that, but you want, you want to be this third person. You want to be fully committed. That means I'm going to show up where there's only two or three of us there. I'm going to ask him what he needs me to do. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, I, I'm not going to think I'm higher or more anointed than the man of God. Somebody say amen. amen. But I'm there. I'm there to help lift up his arms and come on, come on to pray for him. Come on, am I talking to the right church? Come on. I, I, I did. I sent out a decree. I said, listen, I said, I need y'all, some of y'all to come with me. You know, I used to have a good traveling team. I mean, man, we would come like 45, 50 strong. That fell off strong. That fell off. I, I was like, oh, God. I just stopped asking. You hear what I'm saying? I hear what I'm saying. Because you know what? There was something that followed Jesus but so far. But when I let out this clarion call, this last one, I said, listen, I need y'all to come. And I'm telling you, they, they show. They show. And, 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 and you, you know what? You know what? This is what the word of God say. A sheep, watch this, y'all. A sheep will know his shepherd's voice. That, and I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. And I'm prophesying. And, and watch it. He knows the shepherd's voice. And the Bible said a stranger. They won't entertain. Come on. See, see watch, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. One of our jobs as men and women of God, listen to me, is to mature the saints. Get them out. Paul said, I desire that I give you some milk, some meat. I want you to eat some meat now. You've been around long enough. You got tephesis. You, 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 you can chew you some meat now. Instead of every time I say something to you, your feelings is hurt. Every time I say something to you, you're ready to lead a church. Am I talking to the right church? Do you hear what I'm saying? He, he said, look, I'm looking for some folk that are going to stand with me. Come on, go stand beside me. Am I talking to the right church? So that takes fully committed people. Fully committed people. Watch this. Watch this because there's going to be a lot of folk that count you out. When you start getting close to the man of God, listen to me, y'all. I'm telling you what I know. When you start getting closer to the man of God, you start listening to him. You start submitting. You start submitting to the things that he or she said. Watch this. You're going to have folk that going to try to run you down. Amen. But you got to turn a deaf ear. Somebody say deaf ear. Amen. You got to turn a deaf ear. Watch this. Can I say this? And I, I'm closing. Come on, come on, advance. I'm closing. This man has the keys to your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's plenty of folk that have counted you out and said, look, you ain't going to mount nothing. They, they're going to be the same people over there. You know what? I said this Sunday, they said the same thing to Tiger Woods. Yes, 
they counted them out. They, they looked at everything that boy had done and put it all on the media. His body fell on him. People don't even know that the boy was playing in pain, playing with injury. But guess what? He was committed. I told our church, I said, he just kept on swinging. Kept on swinging. Grimacing in pain. Kept on swinging. People talking about him. Kept on swinging. Come on, church folk against him. Kept on swinging. Media against him. Kept on swinging. Huh? Huh? They said, why are you doing this? He said, because I'm committed to the game. And he said, even though I've not yet received a victory. I just read this today. I've not received a victory. Watch this. This was the interview. He said, I know the victory is mine. Three weeks, two weeks ago or so, they put that boy on a green coat. Now everybody that was criticizing him was now ready to interview him. Who am I talking to? I want you to lift your hands right where you are right now. Lift your hands. I'm going to tell you, just as sure as your hands are lifted, I prophesied over everybody in this church right now that what the devil meant to kill you with, God's going to use the process in which you went through to cause you to have your greatest victory. He come outside. Come on, lift him, lift him, lift him. I want you to receive it. I want you to receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There you go. Just receive it. It meant to kill you. It meant to destroy you. It meant for you not to even ever recover from it. But God said, my hand's on you. And no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper. It may show up, but it won't defeat you. Come on, open your mouth and say, I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed. Come on, say, I'm anointed for this. Every hand lifted. Every hand lifted. Tell her to come in. Come in. Let me. Let, is it all right, Pastor? Do you have all? I just seen something with you, and I'm, I want to do it. And um, let me.